was a beautiful morning and I was describing the view in front of me to my friend Nancy on the phone. I said there was a pretty little house painted in blue with a rooftop, a chimney and four front windows. But there was a similar house to the right painted in red. So instead of describing it completely, I simply said that it was identical to the first one but painted in red color. Guess the trick I used here? I just use the first house as a principal component to describe the second house. Hello Monica, read this paper, understood about WMSN? Yeah Nancy. Let's say there's a technologically advanced king who deploys wireless multimedia sensor networks using many camera nodes to monitor around his castle. Let's focus on one camera node which captures an image of the enemy. To reduce its processing load, the camera node splits the image into blocks and sends one block to each of the common nodes in the cluster to which it belongs to. The common nodes compress the block images, send them to their cluster head node which sends them to the transmitting station. At the receiving end, the received blocks are decompressed and merged upon the original image. But for processing the data, could you brief on the digital representation of images? Okay. There could be infinite colors in the visible spectrum but for convenience, let's choose just 8 colors and assign them values. If the image is just a single blue dot, then a 1 cross 1 matrix with the value of blue can represent it. If the image is a strip with 5 pixels, then a 5 cross 1 matrix can represent it and this image can be represented using a 5 cross 4 matrix. Okay. Now, how are you gonna use linear algebra to explain PCA? Well, consider a matrix with three rows. Here rows 1 and 2 are linearly independent and orthogonal, meaning one is not a scalar multiple of the other. But row 3 is a linear combination of rows 1 and 2. So R1 and R2 form the orthogonal bases for the matrix. Now consider an image matrix. Here rows 3 to 6 can be expressed in terms of rows 1 and 2 which form the principal components of this image matrix. The idea of PCA is that transmit only the principal components and generate the other components using them. Monica, in this case all the rows can be exactly represented by rows 1 and 2. But for an actual image, this may not be the case. We need to use approximations. How will you choose the principal components for the best possible representation of the image matrix? Then let me summarize the PCA algorithm. Here we go. Choose a data matrix of m rows and n columns. Centralize the rows, meaning find and remove the mean value from each row. Find the covariance matrix of x transpose. Find the m eigenvalues of cx and rearrange them in descending order. Find the corresponding m orthogonal eigenvectors. Find the cumulative contribution rate of each eigenvalue. Suppose if we need to recover at least 85% of the original image after a compression, we choose the extraction efficiency ERA to be 0.85. Our idea is to reduce the number of rows from M to K. Choose K such that the cumulative contribution rate of the K eigenvalues greater than or equal to 0.85. In this case, K equals 1. Now form a matrix U such that the first k eigenvectors form its rows. Then transform x using U to find y which has only the principal components. Wait, how do you prove that y has only orthogonal principal components? Well, for this transformation, we can show that the covariance matrix of y transpose has only diagonal elements, meaning the rows of y are mutually orthogonal. Now, instead of sending the entire image data, we send only the matrices with the principal components, transformation, and mean values using which we can recover the original image data at the receiver. This may seem unnecessary for a small image, but for a typical image of a very large size, this algorithm can save memory and energy. Okay, but the paper uses a noise-tolerant algorithm, right? How do you justify that? Well, Nancy, let's play a game. For this image, you're going to help me identify the rows that may be principal components. Ready? Row 1. This can't be a principal component. That's right. It has the same value repeated 4 times. Instead, we could simply transmit the mean value. In step 2 of the PCA algorithm, we remove the mean from each row and add it back at the receiver in step 10. Now, row 2. This may be a principal component. How about row 3? Row 3 looks more like the original row was corrupted by noise during transmission from the camera node to the common nodes to yield this, right? 
In general, a useful signal's variance is much larger compared to the noise variance. By rearranging the eigenvectors in step 5, we make sure that the covariance matrix of Y transpose has the largest k variances along the diagonal. These correspond to the image rows with the largest AC power. Thus, we choose the k best components for noise tolerance. Yes, so basically what this paper says is, to improve energy consumption, memory and computational power in WMSN, the camera nodes and common nodes share the workload of image acquisition, compression and transmission. Here the common nodes compress the image by NDIC algorithm which is based on PCA. And I had to understand some linear algebra and other concepts to describe the PCA algorithm. And the recovered image quality depends on the extraction efficiency.